Hi, hello. Now that you know how to calculate the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the Earth, let's talk about weight. If we define our weight as the gravitational force exerted between the Earth and you, we can use the result from the previous video to relate the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the Earth. But how do you measure your weight? How do we do an experiment to determine your weight? Well, you step on a scale and the needle points to your mass in kilograms or your weight in newtons or pounds. The scale contains a spring, so let me simplify the experiment as you hanging from a spring. You already know that the heavier you are, the more the spring will stretch. A calibrated spring will perfectly relate the stretching of the spring with your weight. You will experience two forces, one gravitational from the Earth pointing down and an elastic one from the spring pointing up. This way you are in balance, you do not accelerate, and both forces should be equal. So the force experienced by the spring is the same as your weight. But wait! The Earth is rotating, isn't it? Because the Earth is rotating, there is a centripetal acceleration to take into account here. Now we still only have two forces, gravity and the spring, but there is a net centripetal acceleration. Because your trajectory is a circle about the axis of rotation of the Earth, the centripetal acceleration points to that axis and the net force is equal to your mass times this centripetal acceleration. If you are standing up right at the equator, the centripetal acceleration points downwards. So force of the spring pointing up minus mg pointing down is equal to your mass times centripetal acceleration. This centripetal acceleration is also pointing down to the center of the trajectory. So here it's negative. We also know that this centripetal acceleration is v square over r, where v is your tangential velocity and r is the radius of curvature. Be careful as this r is not the radius of the Earth. It is the radius of the circle that is your trajectory. If you were at a, the equator, then it would be the radius of the Earth. But if you are not, then it is smaller than the radius of the Earth. We will be doing some trigonometry in a moment. So, if you are using a spring to measure your weight, you are not actually measuring mg. You are measuring an apparent weight. Let's do the math. Let's solve for the force of the spring, which is the one that you are measuring in your experiment. F of the spring is equal to mg minus mv square over r, where r is the radius of the trajectory. Because of the circular motion, we can rewrite the tangential velocity as r times omega, where r is the radius of the trajectory and omega is the angular velocity. That is, how many radians you travel per second. This we can get knowing that it takes one day to complete one revolution, 2 pi radians. First, we assume for one moment that you travel to the equator of the Earth. The, the radius of your trajectory is the radius of the Earth, and we can write your apparent weight as m times g minus radius of the Earth times omega squared. This equation tells us that the weight that the spring indicates is actually smaller than your actual weight. I'm sorry to be bearer of such news. So, the net force that we experience is less than our weight. The equation also indicates that the faster the Earth spins, the smaller the apparent weight will be. There will be an angular velocity and omega for which the apparent weight will be zero. For spins faster than that, we would be ejected from the Earth or whatever planet we are trying to visit. Now, let's assume that we are in Spokane in the state of Washington. The city is at 47.66 degrees north. This means that the radius of curvature will be the radius of the Earth multiplied by the cosine of 47.66. But there is more. Because you are moving on a circle on a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the Earth. It happens that the centripetal acceleration is not pointing to the center of the Earth. It points to some point A on the axis of rotation. 
because of this the force of gravity mg is not in the same line as the force of the spring anymore, although this is a small effect. Here the component of the centripetal acceleration in the direction of mg is ac times cosine of theta. This is v squared over r times cosine of theta, which can also be written in terms of omega as r omega squared times cosine of theta. Remember that low case r is the radius of curvature, which we can write in terms of the radius of the Earth. Now we use the equation on the right, Newton's second law, and substitute the centripetal acceleration we just got down here. I solve for the force of the spring, which, remember, is measuring the apparent weight. And I find the apparent weight at any latitude theta. Note that it is still smaller than the actual weight mg, but the reduced amount is not as much as in the case of the equator. It is multiplied by the cosine square of theta. For theta zero, for the equator, the apparent weight is smallest. As we go up north or south, the apparent weight gets closer to the actual weight, or mg. Let's put some numbers on this to see how relevant is this factor here on Earth. Assume a person of 70 kilograms of mass in Spokane, Washington. The actual weight is mg, so 70 times 9.8, 686 Newtons. For the apparent weight, we also need to calculate omega for the Earth. Omega is 2 pi radians over the seconds in one day, which are 24 times 3600. This is 2.27 times 10 to the negative 5 radians over second. Now, all these numbers together, m times g minus r times omega squared times cosine squared of theta, is 685 newtons, which is just 0.15% smaller than the actual weight. So if you live in a similar latitude as Spokane, you need to add that 0.15% to what your scale is telling you in order to know your real weight. If you go to the north or south pole of the Earth, there the apparent weight will be equal to the actual weight, mg. If you are considering moving to live to the equator, just so you know that there your apparent weight is only 0.34% smaller than your real mg weight. May science be with you.